Hello and welcome to NHK Newsline. I'm Raja Pradhan in Tokyo. We begin with an update on the ballistic missile launched from North Korea. The South Korean military's Joint Chiefs of Staff says North Korea fired the missile early Wednesday morning. Japan's defense ministry says the missile may have fallen into the country's exclusive economic zone after flying for about 50 minutes. South Korean military officials say the missile was launched from Pyongsong in South Pyongyang province and flew eastward. The South Korean military is gathering more information on the missile launch. If the launch is confirmed, it'll be the first by North Korea in over two months. Japanese government sources told NHK the government has detected three projectiles and one of them fell into the sea 210 kilometers off Aomori Prefecture in northern Japan. Japan's chief cabinet secretary, Yoshide Suga, said the government will convene a National Security Council meeting. We can never accept North Korea's repeated provocative acts. We will lodge a strong protest against them. They will never have a bright future if they do not resolve issues such as abductions and nuclear and missile development. We strongly urge the country to change its policy. The U.S. and its allies have been on the alert for a response from North Korea after Washington relisted the country as a state sponsor of terrorism. The South Korean military says it conducted a missile defense drill as a countermeasure. Now, White House spokesperson Sarah Sanders wrote on Twitter that U.S. President Donald Trump was briefed on the situation in North Korea while the missile was still in the air. And we will keep giving, bringing an update on the situation as soon as we get more information. Now, North Korea has continued to accelerate its missile development. Pyongyang has carried out 19 missile launches since January, a faster pace than last year. Recent launches have included the new intermediate-range Hwasong-12. In May, the missile was fired at a steeper angle, known as a lofted trajectory, meaning it flew higher and over a shorter range than usual. Just a week later, the North fired a new version of a ballistic missile that had previously been launched from a submarine. Pyongyang also fired a missile with a new precise guidance system. It says the technology allows a shorter launch time. In June, state-run media reported on the successful first test of a new type of surface-to-ship cruise missile. It was followed by another provocation. Pyongyang boasted that they'd successfully launched an intercontinental ballistic missile called the Hwasong-14. In August, a stronger UN sanctions resolution came into effect. The North Korean military responded by announcing detailed plans to launch four missiles simultaneously over Japan and into waters near Guam. But instead, the country fired a single Hwasong-12 missile in a different direction over northern Japan two times in three weeks. The latest launch flew over 3,700 kilometers. This is 1,000 kilometers more than the previous one. Pyongyang showed that Guam is within its range. People in Japan are increasingly concerned, especially in the northern region. I was hiding in a shower booth just in case. I'm annoyed. I'm glad nothing happened, but I'm still anxious. North Korea now seems much more confident about its missile capabilities.
State media reported Kim Jong-un said their final goal is military equilibrium with the U.S. and that the North has almost completed its nuclear force. Experts have warned Pyongyang is on the verge of succeeding in its goal of being able to hit the United States with a nuclear-tipped ICBM. A U.S. foreign policy think tank came to this conclusion after conducting analysis of footage of a previous missile launch. On July 28, North Korea fired a Hwasong-14 missile, which it claimed was an ICBM. It's estimated to have flown for 45 minutes before plunging into the Sea of Japan. NHK cameras in northern Japan captured a flash of the missile before it landed. Experts at Carnegie Endowment for International Peace analyzed the footage to determine if it depicted a re-entry vehicle, the part of an ICBM that could deliver a nuclear weapon. They estimate that the object was falling at a speed of 6 kilometers per second from a height of 44 kilometers. This is slower than the normal speed of a re-entry vehicle falling to Earth. If it's the re-entry vehicle and the re-entry vehicle is tumbling, um, that would give us some questions about the exact status of North Korea's program. But their analysis wasn't conclusive as to whether it was the re-entry vehicle or another part of the missile. The North Koreans successfully launched the missile. It climbed to a very, very high altitude. Um, it um, uh, fell almost all the way back to Earth, as it should have done. And it was only at the very end of the flight that something went wrong. They say the underlying point is that the test was nearly successful and in terms of missile development, this is significant. The North Korean scientists are very capable. Um, they've proven themselves over time to be good and effective engineers. If they don't have an ICBM that can hit the US today, they will have in the very near future. Kim Jong-un watched the launch from a close distance. Experts point out Pyongyang wanted to show they are confident that ICBM development is nearly completed. The North's ruling party newspaper praised the launch and claimed it panicked the United States. Kim Jong-un is the third son of former leader Kim Jong-il. His regime uses military might to consolidate its power. Kim Jong-un made his first public appearance in September 2010 when he was named vice chairman of the Central Military Commission of the ruling Korean Workers' Party. He is believed to be in his early 30s. On the day Kim Jong-il died, state media referred to Kim Jong-un as the heir apparent. <laughs> The young leader faced a challenge to cement his power in the party and with the military. In his first public speech, he vowed to follow his father's lead. But Kim Jong-un soon reshuffled his aides, some of whom had served for a long time in the previous regime. He shocked observers in 2013 when he ordered the execution of his uncle and mentor, Chang Song-tek. Chang was believed to be one of Pyongyang's highest ranking officials. He had a key role reforming the country's economy and attracting foreign capital. The state media accused Chang of trying to wrest control in a military coup. But it has been reported that Kim Jong-un was fearful of his uncle's power and influence. Meanwhile, Kim Jong-un ordered the construction of high-rise apartments and amusement facilities in the capital. Observers say he aims to create a popular image. 
he reportedly models his appearance on his grandfather, Kim Il-sung, reminding people of the country's founder, who is still admired. Kim Jong-un took on a new title last year, chairman of the Korean Workers' Party Congress. Pyongyang allowed foreign media to cover the event and observe a parade. It was seen as an effort to show off the regime's firm hold on power. Earlier this year, another dramatic development sent shockwaves around the world. Kim Jong-un's half-brother was killed with a highly toxic nerve agent at Kuala Lumpur International Airport in Malaysia. Local police suspect North Korean officials were behind the assassination. Kim Jong-nam was believed to be critical of his brother, and he was killed in a bid to eliminate any sources of political unrest. Kim Jong-un has developed nuclear and missile programs at a faster pace than his predecessors. Observers say that reflects his relatively stable grip on power for the moment. Now an update for you on the ballistic missile launched from North Korea. A U.S. Defense Department spokesperson says the North launched an intercontinental ballistic missile. South Korean military's, the South Korean military's Joint Chiefs of Staff says North Korea fired the missile early Wednesday morning just hours ago. Now Japan's defense ministry says the missile may have fallen into the country's exclusive economic zone after flying for about 50 minutes. South Korean military officials say the missile was launched from Pyongsong in South Pyongyang province and flew eastward. The South Korean military is gathering more information now on the launch. If the launch is confirmed, it'll be the first by North Korea in over two months. Japanese government sources told NHK the government has detected three projectiles and one of them fell into the sea 210 kilometers of Aomori Prefecture, northern Japan. Japan's chief cabinet secretary, Yoshide Suga, said the government would convene a national security council meeting. We can never accept North Korea's repeated provocative acts. We will lodge a strong protest against them. They will never have a bright future if they do not resolve issues such as abductions and nuclear and missile development. We strongly urge the country to change its policy. The United States and its allies have been on the alert for a response from the North after Washington relisted the country as a state sponsor of terrorism. The South Korean military says it conducted a missile defense drill as a countermeasure, and South Korean President Moon Jae-in has convened a national security meeting. South Korea's unification minister says North Korea may announce next year it's completed the development of intercontinental ballistic missiles capable of carrying nuclear warheads and reaching the U.S. mainland. The North will mark the 70th anniversary of its foundation in 2018. Experts think North Korea needs two to three more years to make warheads that can re-enter the atmosphere, but the pace of developing their nuclear capabilities is faster than had been expected. Cho suggested sanctions should be intensified to prevent Pyongyang from obtaining missile technology. But he said sanctions and pressure alone will not be enough to persuade the North to give up its nuclear ambitions. He emphasized the importance of dialogue and warned the lack of communication channels between the two Koreas could lead to an accidental war.